got just a few more people coming in to be seated. So um, while they're getting seated, let me just go ahead and, and thank you all for coming out today. Uh, it's a great day to be inside. The weather's a little bit cool, a little bit rainy out, so Car Museum's perfect for a, a place to come and to hear April today. Uh, our Morgan Family Lecture Series is something we put on annually. Uh, this is in addition to our monthly tread talk, but the Morgan Family Lecture Series is something that we try to notch up a little bit, have speakers in that uh, uh, are professionals that are unique, uh, to tell a story outside of just a specific type of car. And uh, we got to meet April, gosh, three or four years ago now, I'm assuming it's been. She was doing, I actually met her the first time she was doing a uh, presentation down at the Flint Hill Discovery Center, and I went down there to see her and met her and saw some of the work she was working on and was just so overly impressed with it. We invited her to come out and see our museum. Uh, she did a number of paintings that you'll see on display for which she graciously donated to our museum. We can't thank her enough for that, but be sure to check those out today. Um, I commissioned her to do some work for me for one of my cars that you'll see. And I'll let her talk about the paintings she's brought. But uh, uh, anyway, April's from Marysville, and uh, I heard her family, and you have two children? I do. Two children, a son and a daughter, I believe. I think. Are they here? They are. I know your son and husband and your daughter are here too. Yep. Okay. Oh, right over here. Okay. And so thank you all for coming out. Thank you for all the people from Marysville that traveled in and from around the area. But uh, April just does amazing work, and uh, she's known nationally. She's had works of art being shown at Barry Jackson car auctions. Uh, she has works of art at the Garage Museum I know in Salina, as well as here. She does a lot of murals. Um, so talented, and the thing that impresses me most about April's paintings is if I'm across, the, not too far across the display floor, across one of her paintings, it looks like a photograph. I mean, it's that exact thing, and how she does that, I'll never know. That's why I don't do it, I guess I don't have that kind of a talent. But uh, anyway, welcome. I'm not going to talk anymore. I'm going to turn it over to April and let her enlighten us. Thank you, April. Thank you, Thank you Ed. Yes, I do also want to thank you all for coming. Um, it makes my heart so happy to see you guys here, especially the familiar faces and the family and new faces as well. Um, and I just feel so blessed to have this opportunity to share my story with you. And um, I'm excited and I hope you enjoy it. Um, so just for fun, um, let's start with a joke. <laughs> I heard this joke yesterday and I told it to my husband and so he laughed and so I said, I'm gonna share it tomorrow. <laughs> okay, here it goes. I told my luggage that we are not taking a vacation this year. Now I have emotional baggage. First, I'd like to acknowledge my greatest blessings and my favorite things on this earth, my family. This photo was taken a week ago at a friend's wedding. Um, so this is my husband, Curtis, my son, Blake, and my daughter, Ava. And here they are again. With little or no choice of their own, they have been on this journey with me, which has not always been easy. And I thank them for their support and for not running away. <laughs> Next, I definitely want to thank the Morgans, Ward and Brenda, for this incredible car museum for all to enjoy and for liking my paintings enough to hang them on their walls. A special thanks to Doug Malone, who he mentioned a few short years ago when I had my first ever showing of my work at the Flint Hills Discovery Center I invited him to come see us, and he did. And that was the beginning of my relationship with the Midwest Dream Car Collection. A big thank you to Sherry and Doug for their encouragement and support in many ways, and along with Doug and Ward for inviting me to be your guest artist today. I've really enjoyed getting to know all of you and appreciate your friendship. And also a thanks to Aiden, who I met yesterday, who he's done the fabulous marketing and advertising for the lecture and helped me get set up. When deciding on what to talk to you about today, I thought about three questions I am asked the most when I have my paintings out and about. 
I also decided to focus on the story of how I became a car artist, which probably surprised me more than anybody else. Since I don't have much time, I will try to talk fast and stay on script, and will have to skip over a lot of awesome details, including my painting process. If you are here today as an artist, or just interested in the art side of it all, please stick around and ask questions at the end. The first question, and for some reason the one I get all the time, and it could be because people are really curious and don't know and want to know, but in my opinion, it's not a fair question. The question is, how long does a painting take you? And I do get asked all the time. That's probably the one and only question I get all the time. Um, early on, I used to give people an estimate when they asked. I no longer do that. One time I had someone ask, and then in front of me, started to do the math of dividing the hours into the painting cost. If only the painting part was the only part of the job, that would be awesome. For one thing, I don't keep track of hours because I don't want it to feel like a job. My painting style is pretty fast. It is called Ola Prima, which means wet on wet, which is pos possible with oil paint because it stays wet for a few hours. I paint in a single layer and pretty much put my brush strokes down and leave it alone. Not really any mixing, blending, or layering much different than the traditional painting techniques. Also, one has to take into consideration, it has taken me 20 years to get to this point, and that has to be worth something. Thirdly, there is a lot of cost and time involved in taking your art to shows. I might take a single painting to many shows before it sells, which means paying the booth fee, which sometimes can be in the thousands, travel cost, hotel stay, days away from home, getting the work loaded and unloaded, setting up the booth, taking it down, and not to mention most car shows are in the hottest part of the summer. With that being said, I so enjoy setting up at car shows and art festivals, since my favorite part of the job is to meet people and hear them tell me about their special cars and the stories behind them. And since I have never been a car enthusiast before this, they are educating me as I go. The next most asked question is, where does your passion for cars come from? And the third is, what is the cosmic all about? The answer to these two questions are <coughs> divine intervention. God gets all the credit. They were definitely not my ideas, but his, and I give all the glory to God. This has been as much of a spiritual journey as an artistic journey, and I will share some of my experiences and how God has guided me and blessed me to where I am at this time. So next, let's talk about God. What I know is God is good, and God is love. Many people have different ways to describe God, and I really believe he is indescribable because he is cosmic, which we will define later. Some may use, no, sorry, some may prefer to use the word universe or source. Also, you can think of God as the empty space between all things. As hard as it is to believe, we, our bodies, and all other physical matter is 99.99999% empty space when looked at at the cellular and atomic levels with light waves and energy filling the space. Which if God fills the space, that makes him part of everything. God is all-knowing, all-powerful, unlimited. He is the way maker, our Holy Spirit. I like to have a relationship with God as my Heavenly Father, who knows what is best for me, gives me correction when needed, guidance, sustenance, 
comfort, as well as, sorry, I've lost my place. as well as wisdom, health, insights, and courage. We are all sons and daughters of God, which makes us his children. And so, we are all connected. We are all one. There was a time recently when I sincerely had the question of what does it mean to be holy? I feel like I've heard that word a lot, but didn't really know what it meant and if one can attain it. I ask God, some call it asking your higher self, and immediately he answered with the message of, it is to be one, one with the divine, one with all things. It is the knowing that we are one. You will hear me throughout the lecture say that God told me something. God can reach us in many, many ways through a song, through a conversation, through a visual, through a book, through people and experiences. Now I'd like you to give something a, something to try for me, okay? So it's audience participation. Um, so when I tell you, close your eyes and slowly count to three. Like one, two, three, okay. Ready? Okay, so everybody counted to three in your mind. Um, were you able to sense yourself as the one speaking, saying the words, and also as the one hearing the words? And I'm sure it was in your own voice. When I hear God, it is in my own voice, and I hear it not audibly, but in my mind, but I am not the one saying or thinking the thoughts. They come as a surprise to me. I've come to know and trust this voice. Several years ago, when there was a not so good situation, and I was praying more than ever, I so clearly heard God say, put your shoes on. It was so random and so definite, and it was at 11 o'clock at night. And I'm glad I obeyed because I had to, in an emergency, run outside to the neighbor's house in freezing temperatures with a foot of snow on the ground. I've also learned that God works all things for good for those that love him. Most of the time when people go through difficult situations, later on they will say that it was the best thing that happened to them because of what they learned and how it changed them for the better. And for that, they would do it again if they had the choice. I'd like to share this message of trust, and I believe God knows better than us. From Isaiah, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. So here's a quick backstory, and I'll try to make it quick. But uh, starting with high school, I took all the art classes and had a really good art teacher with a good art program. I decided I wanted to do something with art as a career and chose to major in graphic design as it was the popular thing to do. My first two years in college were a lot of hands-on art classes, which I liked a lot. Then knowing the following year I would start working on the computer for graphic design, I decided I didn't think I would like sitting behind a computer and, and uh, working for other people for their design. So I really didn't know what I wanted to do and I started to stress about it. Then I decided to pray. I got the message of, go into art education because it will be wonderful for a family. It really took me by surprise. As a sophomore in college, having a family was not on my mind. And never would I have chosen an art teacher. And let me tell you why. 
As a child, I was always told I was shy, and so I was. In elementary school, my classmates would say, she doesn't talk, and so I didn't. Then junior high was super awkward, and maybe for everybody. In high school, I was the one who absolutely hated to read in front of the class, and was deathly afraid of presentations. Speech class was torture, so never would have chosen to be an art teacher to stand in front of a classroom. But when it comes from God, you listen. I graduated in December of 02 with an art education degree from K-State. Since it was December, I decided I would substitute teach. It was perfect for me as I gained a lot of confidence and enjoyed seeing different classrooms and different ways teachers did things. About this time, I found out my high school art teacher was planning to retire in one more year. Curtis and I, who were high school sweethearts and engaged at this time, talked and both agreed that we'd like to move to my hometown and be close to family and take on an already established successful art program. I continued to substitute teach and even took on a long-term maternity sub for an art teacher. Curtis and I were married on June 5th in 2004, and I started teaching that August. Teaching was so perfect for me. I absolutely loved the students, and getting to be around art all day felt like a dream. I couldn't believe I got paid for this. My students had a lot of success, and I enjoyed getting to share my art knowledge with them. And it was, and it was perfect for my family. I loved being home with the kids in the summers and holidays. And when they would spend a lot of time with me in the art room, and they grew up around my students, which they equally adored each other. Early in my teaching career, I remember so clearly one day in the classroom, in between classes, I even remember where I was standing because it caught me off guard. I heard God tell me, you won't be an old teacher. You won't always teach. It surprised me because I was really loving my job. And then I remember asking, what is old? And I heard 40. <laughs> now I know that 40 is not old and that God has a sense of humor. And, uh, but when I was 23, 40 did kind of seem old, and uh, that number has significance later. Um, I was lucky that when Blake was a newborn, a master's cohort was offered in Marysville through Baker University. It was a doable way for me to get my master's, and then I could start taking continuing ed classes. As I was teaching, my favorite thing was to continue to learn so I could pass that on to my students. The Kansas City Art Institute offered weekend workshops for art teachers, gaining three credit hours in a weekend with a little bit of homework. These classes were definitely a splurge to get away from the busyness of everyday life and also a chance to be creative and to be with fellow art teachers. I soon was maxed out on the pay scale at 60 credit hours. The time driving there and back was also enjoyable, and I found it to be a rare, quiet time I could spend with God. On one particular trip to an art teacher's convention in Wichita, I felt God's love the entire way. Getting to the hotel and flipping through the channels on the TV, I heard someone call my name from the TV. It caught my attention and felt loud and clear. And this is what the speaker said. And it was so powerful and as if he was speaking right to me. So powerful, I wrote it down. He said, I believe in you and I believe how much you love me. And I will listen and obey immediately. And God gives through you. That is how much he loves others. This was in 2012, and I've had it hanging in my closet ever since. 
Now, at this point in the story, uh, the kids are a bit older, around junior high age. And after teaching for 14 years, I had a major craving to create my own art. As I was trying to think of ways to make extra income for the family, I would think, what kind of art could I do that would sell? I had grown to love lots of kinds of art since I taught it all. So I wondered, would it be photography, ceramics? I especially loved wheel throwing. I also loved drawing and painting. A ceramic artist friend of mine was doing a week-long week workshop in Tennessee, teaching her unique surface decoration technique. So I went. I came back all excited and had lots of ideas. And I know from experience that pottery sells. Then the more I thought about it, working in clay would be dirty and messy. And working on the wheel for hours is backbreaking. And carrying 50 pound boxes of clay up the stairs to my home studio did not seem appealing. So I started thinking about painting, but I didn't know what to paint. I was not really interested in painting landscapes or still lifes. Portraits would be fun, but who and how? So I was really racking my brain and couldn't think of what to do. I began to get frustrated. I decided to pray about it. I felt God tell me, not now, just love on your babies. I thought, okay, yes, I can love on my babies. They were 10 and 12, and they will always be my babies. To tell the truth, I was a bit disappointed to let the side job thing go, but I did let it go. This is when God started to work overtime, behind the scenes. Because a couple of weeks later, in the middle of the night, two words came to me, and again, so strong and so definite. The two words were, car shows. <laughs> I immediately knew that is what I was supposed to paint. It was so random. I didn't normally ever think about car shows or cars. I did not tell my husband about the car show, car show message. It was too bizarre. Never in a million years would I have thought to paint cars. But it was a knowing that that is what I was supposed to paint. Then a few weeks later, and the only time that I know of, that the Holy Spirit took over my body. I was in the classroom during a high school hour, and I had a few students working on the computers in the room. I went over and sat by them, and sat down at a computer, and typed in the, the name Carol, Carol Marine. This name was given to me maybe 10 years prior at an art workshop. At the last minute from the instructor, hey, you guys should check out this lady. She does a small painting every day. I wrote her name down and never looked into it. But every now and then, when flipping through my notebook, I would see her name. This is a hugely important aspect to the story. Because I had always loved painting, but my style was realism because that is how I was taught but I really liked the look of Impressionism. I had tried many times to paint like Monet or Van Gogh with loose brush strokes, but couldn't get the hang of it. When looking at Carol Marine's work, it was so awe-inspiring and the look that I loved. And then I saw that she had a how-to book. She had started this daily painting movement and website where artists could upload their painting of the day. It was too cool. Um, so next up, my husband and I have our birthdays in February. Mine is on the 13th and his is on the 14th, Valentine's Day. And so each year, we do a romantic weekend getaway to celebrate. This year, he asked if I would like to go to the car show, go to a car show in Kansas City for our birthdays. Uh, normally, I would say, uh, no, that doesn't sound very romantic. But of course, with the car show message, um, I was all for it. 
Um, so that's when I told him about the message and that I would like to go. <coughs> and I thought it'd be a good chance for me to take photos to use as a painting reference. And so we went, I took photos, I came back and I painted a few. And again, I started then uh, on the six by six. And I did like it. It was kind of really similar as far as the bright colors, the shiny, um, all the things that appealed to me. And um, I did like it. Okay. And then I went a little bit bigger. This is my first little bit bigger painting of a car and it's 16 by 20. Um, and it was fun to do. Um, and then I painted one even bigger and I did not like it at all. <laughs> and then I tried a different view and I liked it better, but still a learning curve to figure out what direction I was going. And then I had the thought of, oh yeah, the message was car shows not just cars. And Curtis is a really loving husband, but was not the most supportive of my painting venture. And after painting a few cars, he told me, car guys won't like those, and I'm a car guy. <laughs> Ouch. Uh, okay, and then one Saturday, when I was painting in the studio space in my great room, and Curtis had the TV on, and he was watching Motor Trend, he used to watch this quite a bit, but hadn't for years. And they had a car auction on. I excitedly said, what is that? He said, it is Barrett Jackson, one of the world's largest car auctions. Later, I had a strong pull to look it up online. I saw that the next auction was in Palm Beach and strangely felt like I was supposed to go. We talked about it and I, of course, wanted the whole family to go. We looked at plane tickets and it would be too much. And with it being a 22 hour drive, it wouldn't make sense to go there and back. Curtis suggested I go by myself. I looked into the cost and figured it would cost about 18, or, sorry, 1500 for the trip. That dollar amount is important here in a bit. Spring break of that year, I signed up for Daily Paint Works, which gave me my own web page and I started to upload a painting a day. So that was really nice. Um, that through the Daily Paint Works with Carol Marine, she also gives artists their own web page, which is even currently my website. Okay, and around this time, I started reading the Gospels for really the first time outside of church and was journaling each morning. Again, for the first time ever because I had to record all of the cool things that were happening. These two things were life-changing for me. At this time, I would hear God quite a bit, and he would usually give me confirmations to know it was him. On this day, I heard God tell me, I will provide all that you need here at the table of plenty. <laughs> The next day, confirmation came at Sunday Mass, where this was the opening song. And we actually heard it again this morning at Mass. Um, I have come to know that being provided for comes in many ways, such as wisdom, knowledge, insight, ideas, understanding, revelations, comfort, people, opportunities, and financial. So I was wondering how I would pay for the Palm Beach trip. And very soon after, my best friend who coaches tennis, and she's here, asked if I would be her assistant coach. She said it's a quick season and I would get paid $1,500. The crazy thing is I've never played tennis competitively and only a little bit for fun, not really knowing how to play. So it was totally out of the blue that she asked me. I went to Palm Beach and got some great photos that are now paintings. As I was now painting more car paintings and beginning to post online, a high school classmate that I hadn't talked to since high school said, you need a vanity plate. I thought to myself, 
Yeah, I really do. I asked myself what it should be. A few days later, at 1 a.m., the answer came, in the same fashion as the car show message. It was the word cosmic. I immediately knew that was my vanity plate. I had no idea what cosmic meant, and honestly, only heard of cosmic brownies. So I immediately got out of bed and Googled it. Here is what I found. The definition relating to the universe or cosmos, especially as distinct from the earth. Inconceivably vast, so big beyond our human understanding. Concerned with abstract, spiritual, or metaphysical ideas. Characterized by greatness, especially in extent, intensity, or comprehensiveness. Now I hear the word cosmic all the time in different things that I'm guided to as it refers to what we call God. Soon after the cosmic message, these two things were brought to my attention, which we have heard all the time, but to think about it is really mind blowing. And even the very hairs of your head are numbered. He determines the number of the, of the stars. He calls them all by name. That's a lot of stars. That's a lot of names. This was my first painting using the cosmic license plate and including a background. This was taken at our local car show in Marysville. The big decision I had to make was to include this lovely lady on the left or to take her out. When I took the photo, I didn't imagine she would be in the painting, but I thought she added a character and I'm glad I left her in. Here's another painting of, here's one that I took on that Palm Beach trip. And this one is big at 48 by 64 inches. And this is when I knew painting cars was so much fun. The bright colors and shininess really appealed to me, along with the artistry of the designs and details of classic cars, and especially the reflections in the chrome. This man was too fun with his car shirt with palm trees and the fact that he is taking a picture of me, taking a picture of the car. Um, I do move things around quite a bit when I'm composing a, paint, a picture to paint. So on this one, I move the guy in closer to the car, out of the American flags, move the palm trees down. The people add so much life to the paintings, which gives it a car show feel. This little girl to the left of the bus, um, she was perfect as she had peace and love on her shirt with her tie-dye skirt eating a hot dog. This one, the entire car seemed to be a reflection. You can see the clouds and palm trees reflecting into the car, and there are about nine American flags showing in the reflection. And even though the man on the left is cropped, you can still see his head and body reflecting in the car. I painted this series of car paintings, all while still teaching, with the anticipation of returning to Palm Beach, Barrett Jackson, as a vendor the following April. So here's where it gets crazy. At the very beginning of June, I felt, at the very beginning of June, I felt God was telling me to quit painting, sorry, to quit teaching and paint cars full time. This was a total surprise to me. Remember, I was just praying for ideas for a side gig. I was never planning on leaving teaching. I was so nervous to, to tell Curtis. On June 3rd, this song was stuck in my head. Be with us, you who say, I will not forsake you. Be with us, you who say, do not be afraid. I had no idea where it came from, so I decided to Google it and find out more. This is what I found. For he has said, I will never desert you, nor will I forsake you. Be strong and courageous. 
Do not panic before them, for the Lord your God will personally go ahead of you. He will never fail you nor abandon you. So this all happened really fast. It's the beginning of June, June 3rd. Now it's June 5th. This is our anniversary. So I planned a, a nice meal and I told Curtis, tonight let's, let's share our goals. Uh, so this is when he got the surprise. I told him of my plan of not teaching next year and to become a full-time artist. He didn't say much, but seemed worried. He said he didn't sleep much that night. Here was part of my journal entry that God brought to me on June 6th. He said, do not be afraid of what God is inviting you right now. I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work in you will bring it to completion. Philippians 1, 6. So I felt really sure about what God was calling me to do. Curtis was overwhelmed and didn't want to hear about it and wanted me to teach another year. I adore my husband and did not want to go against his wishes. God clearly said to me, you are making him your idol. Whoa. I knew what I had to do, but did not want to without my husband's approval. June is very late in resigning for teaching, and I knew that I needed to talk to the school right away. Lots of praying. Curtis was leaving for a trip and texted me, be not afraid, I am with you. That was so meaningful and so powerful. And I felt like it was my go ahead. He later told me that message had been on his mind all morning, a godsend. That day I talked to the principal and superintendent and they said, with it being so late, they would be unable to find a replacement. And without me, he would not be able to offer art classes. I was devastated. I went to church and the ugly cried in the pew. And our priest came and talked with me and said, God will be patient if I choose to teach another year. And so I did. This was the 2019-2020 the school year. It was, strangely, it was a strangely difficult year in many odd ways. Each day I would start positive and tell myself to just enjoy the day. Then things would always happen. One day after a rough day, pulling into my driveway, I looked at my phone and saw a notification that a friend had posted a video. It was taking a long time to load, and I asked God, why is school being so difficult? He said, so you are never going back. Then the video came on, and it was a song titled, Never Going Back. Sometimes God has to push us to do the hard things. This was important because once COVID hit, after I had already resigned, my best friend and husband both said, maybe you should go back to teaching. I knew I was never going back. It just so happened that on my 40th birthday, I told my students that I'd be becoming a full-time artist. It happened on that particular day in February, on my 40th birthday, because the school board was meeting to approve it the very next day. I was happy to have had the chance to bring in my paintings to show the students what I was doing, since I didn't tell them about my Karsha paintings before that. This all happened before any of us knew about the coronavirus. Spring break came, and later we found out we would not be returning to school. At the beginning of spring break, I was scheduled to be a guest artist at the Flint Hills Discovery Center. At that time, we still didn't hear much at all about the virus, but I found it odd. I kept wiping the door handles. Soon very after was the shutdown and masks. It felt good to set up my panels for the first time. 
with my paintings. So now all the car shows were canceled, including the Barrett Jackson, which I was signed up to go to the very next month. Definitely not in my plans, but it did give me time to paint. And I did have the vision of going larger. And this is one here in the museum. And these, which the museum graciously, graciously hung on their walls. I was excited when Doug asked me to show at the museum in August. It felt good to have my work on display after such a long wait. And then the first car show after COVID was in September um, in Clay Center. And I went to that one and I went to Lake Garnett Grand Prix in October. Um, and then I found out they were going to do a mini trial run for the Barrett Jackson in Scottsdale in October to see if they could do it safely. And so Ava and I went to check it out and they decided to not have their large auction until March that year instead of the normal January. And that worked out well for us since Ava could go with me during her spring break. And she is the best artist assistant. Since this was God's idea to paint cars, <laughs> I thought I would be wildly successful right away. I was so excited to set up at the world's greatest car auction. I got a ton of interest and compliments. Two separate people even called my paintings badass, but not a single sale or commission. I was so confused, but we did have a wonderful time and I met the most awesome artists, which I did not expect to be set up next to other artists. They were so encouraging and gave great advice, and to my surprise, invited us to pray with them each morning. They told me this was a very unusual year and not as much attendance with COVID. Around this time, I had a strong attraction to this image I saw on Instagram. And it was so strong, I felt like I needed to print it, frame it, and put it in my studio. I would then hear many stories about perseverance and overcoming obstacles and not giving up. Here's the image, and um, it just really um, spoke to me. I didn't really quite know why. Um, but it says, let us run with perseverance, the race marked out for us, Hebrews 12.1. It is a runner, and I have ran marathons. Um, but on the back, and I don't remember when I wrote this, but I do want to share because I think it's beautiful. It says, St. Paul speaking to the Colossians. We pray that you'll live well for the master, making him proud of you as you work hard in his orchard. As you learn more and more how God works, you'll learn how to do your work. We pray that you'll have the strength to stick it out over the long haul, not the grim strength of, your, of gritting your teeth, but the glory strength God gives. It is a strength that endures the endurable and spills over into joy, thanking the Father who makes us strong enough to take part in everything bright and beautiful he has for us. And so that really told me, okay, your first show wasn't financially successful, successful in a lot of other ways, um, but I can't give up. And so I went back again the following January, and this time I got a larger booth that was more inviting and brought prints to sell. During this nine day show, I sold a lot of prints, but no paintings until the very last day, and then sold a $4,000 and $2,000 painting. A big lesson in keeping the faith and not losing hope. My definition of success has changed in the past few years. I feel our society sometimes tells us success is money and maybe fame. It is so much more. To me, it means freedom, peace, joy, 
loving God, yourself, and others, loving life, abundance of all kinds, and learning and growing, sometimes through failure. I feel so blessed to have had the pleasure of painting for others. Here are some of my custom commissions. Jeremiah 29 11, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. And I love the variety of jobs that come my way. Personally, I like to do a lot of different things and I wouldn't want to only paint cars. story about meeting Jay Leno, but we're going to skip over it due to time. But I do love it. It's okay. Um, and then Proverbs chapter 3. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not rely on your own insight. In all your ways, acknowledge Him, and He will make straight your paths. I continually have to remind myself to let go and let God I know he knows my heart and my desires more than I do. Sometimes when things are happening as fast or as big as I think they should, I step back and know that everything is happening perfectly as it should be. I remember when the kids were babies, and we all know, if you've had babies, that it is the hardest and best job. I remember saying, half jokingly, my dream job would be a stay-at-home mom once the kids are in school. <laughs> I do believe God has given me this dream job by allowing me to work from home and have the freedom of my schedule to be the mom I want to be and the flexibility of my schedule to be there for the kids when they need me and attend their many activities. Blake is now a senior and the time really does go fast. I am incredibly thankful for the life I have and here are a few things I know for sure. I am not special. We have a special God who loves us all the same and always, which makes us all special. The more I know, the more I know I don't know. And everything is not always easy. I have times where I struggle and I'm far from perfect. Definitely a work in progress. A couple of days, or sorry, a couple of months ago, a woman who we didn't know each other beforehand gave me a sticky note with the title of this song. I had not heard it before. She did not know that I was an artist or that I excitedly picked up clay earlier that day to use on the potter's wheel that was randomly gifted to me. Here are some of the lyrics. And when I doubt it, Lord, remind me, I'm wonderfully made. You're an artist and a potter. I'm the canvas and the clay. You make all things work together for my future and for my good. You make all things work together for your glory and for your name. 
You're not finished with me yet. Oh, remind me, you're making something beautiful. You're making something wonderful. If it's not beautiful, you're not done with me. If it's not beautiful, you're not done with me, Lord. And these last two lines touched me deeply as when my students would say they didn't like the art piece they were working on. I would tell them, that is because you're not done with it yet. God is good. God is love. I choose to let him mold me, change me, make me beautiful for his glory and for his good. And that's a reminder. Thank you for sticking with me and not running away. If you'd like to follow my future endeavors, um, you scan this QR code to get access to my social media. Um, it also has my email and phone number on it. So thank you so much. <laughs>